Hi everyone, I'm Kenan from Cars and Bids, and today is special because we're going to experience the pinnacle of something. It's not every day you get to experience the pinnacle of anything, whether it's the pinnacle of styling or the pinnacle of engineering, it just doesn't come along all that often until a day like today because we're talking about this, the 993 generation Porsche 911 Turbo S, which to Porsche enthusiasts is the pinnacle air-cooled 911. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing all of its facts and figures. First, we'll begin talking about this car's history and where it fits into Porsche's past. Then we'll get nerdy and talk about some of the technical details, and then we'll take it for a drive. And with that, let's get started. Before I get going though, really big news. This 993 Turbo S is currently for sale, being auctioned live on cars and bids. As I mentioned, this is a Turbo S variant, which means it's one of the last air-cooled 911s ever made. This one also touts just 15,500 miles and it comes with a lot of its peripherals, including its original sales invoice, a lot of service documentation, its toolkit, and much more. It's also unmodified and well, it's an incredibly special car. And after you finish watching this video, click the link in the description below where you can head to the live auction of this one where you can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. And we begin the history of the 993 Turbo S by first discussing the 993 911. The 993 was produced from the 1995 to 1998 model years here in the United States. And it was the last air-cooled 911. But why is that relevant? Why does that matter? Air-cooled cars have become, well, basically a byword for expensive <laughs> and for purists. But why is that? Well, the reason has to do with its simplicity. Air-cooled cars don't require the heavy, complicated cooling systems that water-cooled cars do. And as a result, it means that these cars are more simple and more pure, and they're more lightweight. And that's why 911 purists love them so much. They just are more analog, and that is what people are after with the pure experience when they're going after a 911. And so these cars have become incredibly desirable. Also, Porsche can't make air-cooled cars anymore. They stopped doing so in the late 90s because these cars could no longer meet emission regulations and they were kind of at the edge of their efficiency level. And so Porsche stopped making air-cooled cars. And if you want to experience one, you have to buy one of the older models. And that's why they have become so sought after. But the 993 is even more special than that. It was a rare time when Porsche blended the old school air-cooled technology with brand new ideas to make the 993, well, as good as it could be. One of the areas they refined was the rear suspension. Porsche would add a multi-link suspension system to the rear of this car to cure its known lift-off oversteer. Lift-off oversteer occurs when you're driving this car, you lift off the throttle in the corner. The weight of the engine being mounted behind the rear wheels would then come around the car and it would cause it to be unstable. But by adding this multi-link suspension system, it cured a lot of that, making the 911 even more drivable. The 993 would also become the first 911 to have a six-speed manual transmission as standard, which helped bring the 911 into the modern era. Porsche would offer the 993 in a variety of models, from the base two-wheel drive Carrera all the way up to the insane GT2. They would offer all kinds of configurations, from rear-wheel drive models to all-wheel drive models, GT models, and stripped-out track-focused models. But at the top of the list, above them all, sat this, the 993 Turbo S. This car could do zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds, which makes it fast by modern standards. It was also the last 911 to be developed for the 993 generation car, so it was the last air-cooled 911 to be developed. Porsche also didn't produce this car in huge numbers. They only made 345 examples for the entire world, which makes it one of the most sought after 911 models for 911 enthusiasts. But outside of its rarity, there are other reasons this car is so endeared to Porsche enthusiasts. And one of the main reasons is its design. This car is small, but it has these huge hips in the rear, and it's just plain classical elegance at its finest. Of course, Porsche being Porsche, the changes to the Turbo S variant over the Turbo are not merely skin deep, but they did make sure that this car was visually distinguished from the Turbo, and they added some very special touches in order to do that. 
One of the most obvious changes from the outside would be the yellow painted brake calipers. Although they're the same brakes that are shared with the turbo, the four piston front and four piston rear brakes, they painted them yellow on this car and that's a tradition that they carry forward to today. The ultimate brakes that you can get on a Porsche today are Porsche's PCCBs and those are famously painted yellow as well. A little nod to this car. The wheels on this car were also very special as they were finished in this beautiful matte silver color and the center caps in the middle very subtly said turbo s not merely just turbo and not just a porsche crest moving down the side of the turbo s you see these air ducts that are located behind the doors this was a carryover from the 964 turbo s which also had these and they were present on the 959 Porsche began using this as a distinguishing feature for its ultra high performance cars. And it's something that you still see present on turbo models today. But the ducting doesn't end there. Moving to the back of the 993 Turbo S, we have to talk about its revised rear spoiler. This is what Porsche refers to as the Aero Kit 2 spoiler. And Porsche added this top part to the spoiler to increase the downforce even further with this car but they also added additional ducting on the side of the spoiler. And it's really subtle and you might miss it if you're not aware that it's there. It's a very cool and unique detail that Porsche added to this car to further differentiate it from the turbo. The final distinguishing features of the Turbo S compared to the turbo are found back here. Obviously you have the Turbo S badge, which is very obvious, but you also got quad tipped exhaust with this car. The standard turbo had two tips, but for the Turbo S, they gave you four exhaust tips to give it a more sporty and performance focused look. But staying at the business end of the 993 Turbo S, we have to discuss its engine. Now this engine is the same 3.6 liter twin turbocharged flat six that was shared with the turbo, but it received some important upgrades. It would get two triple K K24 turbochargers, an additional oil cooler, and an updated version of Bosch's Motronic engine management system. Like the turbo, it would continue to use the same air to air cooling system, the same revised cylinder head, and the same upgraded engine internals over the standard 911. But this car would receive some special tweaks in order to make it more powerful. And the result of those upgrades meant that this car makes 424 horsepower and 423 foot-pounds of torque in US spec. The less restricted European version of this car made 450 horsepower. And in a car that weighs about 3,300 pounds, that meant that it was fast. Again, this car could get to 60 miles an hour in 3.7 seconds, which for the standards of the late 1990s was fast, but even by today's standards, this is still a ridiculously quick car. The last thing I want to discuss at the back of the 993 Turbo has to do with its suspension. Now, as I mentioned before, this car had a multi-link suspension system, and it can't be underscored how big of a deal this was. Porsche used the suspension system from their 989 prototype car, which was a four-door sedan that never went into production, but they used the rear suspension design of that car here with the 993, and they would continue development of that with the next generation car, the 996. It was such a big deal because it meant that these cars were much more stable and controlled to drive, and as a result, it cemented the reputation of the 993 as a truly fantastic driver's car, and that's one of the main reasons why they're so desirable to Day. Moving inside the 993 Turbo, there are some really important things that I want to point out in here, and one of them has to do with the trim that's used inside this car. Porsche began using carbon fiber with these cars, and they introduced it very obviously in the interior of this car. The gauge cluster bezel is all done in carbon fiber, as is the door trim and the dash trim. They also added a chassis brace in the front area, which was also made of carbon fiber. And they added little Turbo S badges throughout to really accentuate that this was a special ultra high performance version of the 911. Another important detail on the inside of the Turbo S, of course, would be its six-speed manual transmission. As I mentioned, this was the first generation of 911 that would offer a six-speed manual as standard, as opposed to a five-speed manual. They would also offer the Tiptronic automatic transmission in various 911 models, just like they had with the 964. But if you wanted the ultra-high-performance, ultra-driver-focused version of the 911, well, you had to know how to use a third pedal. In the 996 generation turbo, they would begin to offer an automatic, and it was a sign of things to come. But for the 993, it was the pure driver-focused analog era of Porsche, and that meant that you had a six-speed manual transmission. The final thing I want to discuss in the interior of the Turbo S is just how much leather is in this car. There is leather 
everywhere, and I do mean everywhere, from the air vents, which are covered in leather, and you see these little stitch lines on all the corners to drive home the point that there's cow skin on here, to the cigarette lighter, which is wrapped in leather. Everything in this interior is covered in leather. And that drives on the point that this car was still very luxurious. Although it was the driver-focused, ultra-high-performance version of the 911, all of this leather drives home the point that this was a really nice place to be, especially on long drives. Okay, we're driving the 993 Turbo S. Now, the first thing I wanna say right off the bat, and it's not just because we're selling this car, this is an incredibly nice example. Um, I've been very fortunate to have spent some time around 993 Turbo S's uh, in my previous job in an exotic car dealership uh, in Ohio, and this one is really very, very nice. So it's a true privilege to get to drive one that's been preserved and presented as well as this one has. I'm really excited to be driving it. Um, so this car is extremely important for Porsche. As I mentioned, it's the last of the air-cooled cars, which means that it marks the end of a historical era for Porsche. Uh, and I think one of the things that I've always loved about the 993 Turbo is that it really finally coupled uh, true, like actual performance um, with uh, the old school analog driving characteristics of a 911. And that's always what's been so exciting about it. And the Turbo S then takes that to the ultimate level. It just makes a lot of power. This car doesn't weigh a whole lot. Again, one of the beauties of it being air-cooled, not a lot of you know, very heavy cooling system related things in this car. So it has a low curb weight um, and it's also very powerful. It makes 424 horsepower, which might not sound like a lot today, um, but in a car that only weighs 3,300 pounds, uh, that's a, a lot of power. One of my other favorite aspects about this car is the way it looks. It's so achingly good looking, I think, um, and it is just aged beautifully. It's just an analog Porsche and it just looks so, so good. But right away, one of the things about this car is, uh, woo! <laughs> wow, it's quick. <laughs> That's awesome. Man, it just picks up and holds off. That feels so good. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I knew driving this car was just going to be a thrill to drive. And, and that's the best part about the 993 is it's just such an excellent driver's car. And the Turbo S just gets all this power and it just... Man, those turbos kick in and boy, it just takes off. Oh, it's so fun. The other benefit of this car, um, one of the things I love the most about it is the sizing. It's small, it's it's a tiny car, especially in here. I can reach the passenger door no problem just by simply you know, extending my hand over it. It's a small car. Um, and so it means that you can place it really well on the road. It, it's easy to, to position. And that's one of the joys of cars of this era. It's one of the things I loved about my 355 was that it was so small, I could position it well on the road. And you could, you know, make apexes within your own lane. You don't need to, you know, be able, you know do anything illegal and cross the double yellow. So the sizing uh, is amazing. But let's break down the driving experience uh, a little bit more. The steering is one of the most important aspects of me of, to me of any car. Um, and it's really nice in this car. It, it's heavy and, um, and it, it just it feels lovely in this thing. It is from the 90s, so there's a little bit of play on center, but that's nice. But then there's the engine, which just, wow. Man, you spool those turbos up. And honestly, the sound is not that insane, but then you look down how fast you're going and it's like, whoa, this car is quick, legitimately quick. I think that's one of the best aspects of this car as it, it's truly timeless. The performance is still thrilling now and you know, coupled with all of the analog things, you know, all the way down to the sound of the door latch and how it opens, um, this car is really very usable. It's just enjoyable and like deployable and usable and that's great. The other thing about this car, of course, is that multi-leak suspension I mentioned. And so you have all of this access to all this performance, which is fantastic, but it's also controllable as you drive it. Obviously, this isn't my car. I'm not pushing it on, on public roads or anything like that, but like it just feels planted. When I turn the wheel, the, the handling is just, it's just excellent. And that really adds a lot of peace of mind with the car that you know, the turbos spool up and things get crazy. Um, the car isn't going to step out as, as much as you know a, a previous 911 would. Uh, and you're not gonna have to deal with as much lift off oversteer uh, as other 911s had dealt with in the past. There's a reason these have become worth so much money because they are ludicrously expensive cars now. 
Um, that's because we're never going to experience anything like this again. There are going to be no more air-cooled 911s. Um, and it's just good. This car is so good. And, and that's what it was running for in its era. And it's sort of been held up as the pinnacle of air-cooled cars. And, well, frankly, it deserves it. And this car is also an overtaking weapon. All you need is a little gap and you squeeze the throttle. And off you go. <laughs> Wow, that's so special, my goodness. But man, the power. Goodness gracious, the power. <laughs> this car is fast. This car is really fast. It's quick. It is so quick and it's so unassuming because you're driving an old car and you think, oh, it's an old car. Nah, -uh. this, uh, this, is a, this is a quick, quick car. And that's the Turbo S. Just an amazing car. It was amazing in its era. It's amazing now. It's been an absolute pleasure to drive this car. And I really don't want to give it back. <laughs> it's a very special machine. And that is the 993 Porsche 911 Turbo S. This is a truly outstanding car that packs modern day performance into the shell of a classic 911. It also marks the end of the air-cooled era for Porsche and, well, it's just a very special car. And if you've been in the market for one of these, well, you can buy this one only on Cars and Bids. Thank you all so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon. Goodbye.